Hello and welcome to Finding God's Way. I want to briefly talk to you about a subject here that's very controversial. It's been going around for quite some time. Uh, and that is the idea of a rapture. Uh, the, there are many religions that teach about the rapture. And the rapture is simply not found anywhere in Scripture. You cannot find the word rapture in the Bible or the concept of the rapture itself being taught anywhere in the Bible. It is a man-made, contrived idea of how man thinks things are going to turn out. The belief that the Lord will return and set up an earthly kingdom uh, is what what the premise of the uh, rapture concept is all about. Uh, it's directly tied to premillennialism. The idea that the Lord will return someday and set up his kingdom and reign on earth for a thousand years. That too is not taught anywhere in scripture. That's something that some man somewhere has come up with. Uh, John, for instance, the one who authored the book of Revelation clearly tells us something very important if we pay attention. Turn to Revelation 1 verse 9. And listen carefully what John says. He says, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Are you listening? He's t clearly telling you, first of all, he's in tribulation. And that's part of what the, the rapture is all about, to take some people away from the tribulation that's coming. And the millennialists uh, talk about that. The tribulation, so many years of tribulation and trouble. John said he's in the tribulation at that time. And he's what? In the kingdom. How could he be in the kingdom that the Lord, quote unquote, is supposed to come and set up? He, he can't be. He can't be in the kingdom that's going to be an earthly kingdom. It makes no sense. So right there, that one verse nullifies all of that concept uh, and theology that people are trying to teach. But that's not enough. People still want to believe in it. They also talk about the, the uh, day of the Lord, that he's going to be sneaky. He's going to come in. He's going to be quiet about it. And he's going to snatch away uh, all these people that are his people and leave the rest of them here. Uh, they've got movies out. They've got stories about people, uh, you know, the airplanes flying along and, and all of a sudden the pilot's gone because the Lord raptured, raptured him. Well, the rest of the people are just going to have to crash because there's no pilot on board. Well, does that sound like something the Lord would do? Of course not. God wouldn't do something like that. God's not evil. God is not mean. God is not cruel. The Bible clearly tells us that when the Lord returns, exactly what's going to happen. First of all, in the book of Thessalonians, he tells it very clearly, it's not going to be a quiet, quiet event. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 16 says, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Everybody's going to hear him. And the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. They're not coming back down. They're not going to return back to the earth and set up an earthly kingdom. Because the dead in Christ will rise first. And Paul talks about this in Corinthians. talks about this mortal shall put on immortality. He talks about that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50, he says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Are you listening to Paul? 
This is the whole premise of the millennialists. This is a, a, all the, what they're talking about for the rapture and everything. They're, they're saying the Lord's going to set up an earthly kingdom. What did Paul just say? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It's not going to be a fleshly kingdom. It's not going to be one here on earth. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the last time the Lord calls. For the trump shall sound, and the dead shall rise, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. We just read in Thessalonians when that happens, it's when the Lord returns. One call, and we'll be changed. We'll put on immortal bodies. In verse 53 of 1 Corinthians 15, it says, For this corruptible, this, this flesh, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. How hard is that to understand? It isn't. It isn't hard, is it? At all. Well, also, Peter talks about the day of the Lord. In 2 Peter chapter 3, starting with verse 11, it says, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, that's things in the earth and the, and the, the uh, space of the heavens, all those things that we see. <clears throat> Seeing these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, the day of the God is when he returns. Wherein the heavens shall be on fire with, and dissolved with the elements, shall meet with a fervent heat. Nevertheless, we look for, look for the ha forward and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens shall be on fire with, and dissolved, and the elements shall be with a fervent heat. Look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Not hard to understand that. New heavens and a new earth. A place where God has already told us, the Lord himself said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. Why? Because it's a spiritual place, not a physical place. Paul has told you, flesh and blood, you and I, we cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It can't be because it's a spiritual kingdom. We look back in Daniel. All the They love to use scriptures in Daniel and other uh, uh, prophecy books and try to say it's talking about something today. <clears throat> Uh, it clearly tells us, clearly tells us, without any problem at all, beloved, that there's only only going to be a certain number of worldwide kingdoms, and that's it. And we've already had them all, all except for one, and that is the one that's here now that we cannot see, and that is the kingdom, the church. The Bible tells us the kingdom is the church. And right now we're told that Christ is sitting on his throne. Why would he be sitting on the throne if he's not a, a king over a kingdom? And he is a king over the kingdom. He is our king. He's our Lord, our master. He's right now, according to Acts, sitting on the throne of David, reigning over his kingdom, which is a spiritual kingdom, which is the church. He is the head of the church. It's not hard to understand these things. But another, another verse that that contradicts this uh, idea of a rapture is their their concept that they teach is that there's going to be more than one resurrection. That the Lord's going to return and secretly get his chosen ones and he's going to take them to be with him. And then uh, later on there will be another resurrection wherein uh, the others will rise. But that can't be. There's only going to be one resurrection. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and then the dead that are in trouble are going to rise afterwards. One resurrection. Okay? Resurrected to face judgment. You see, it, we can find that looking at John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. It says, Do not marvel at this. The Lord himself is talking. Don't marvel at this. 
For the hour is coming in which all, notice it says all, who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. When does he hear his voice? We've already read it. Thessalonians, the shout of an archangel. He's coming and announcing his presence. The Lord will call them forth from the graves. He's the one who has the power of resurrection. When all will hear his voice and come forth from the graves. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life. And those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. How many resurrections? One. The Lord himself has said so. So that does, does away with the concept right there. You notice each of these verses are, is teaching clearly uh, something that contradicts the idea of premillennialists and those who believe in the rapture. These scriptures are showing that's not so. Are we going to be taken up into the air to be with the Lord? Absolutely. But we're going to do that when he returns. And we'll be changed. Or our bodies will be changed. We'll have our same bodies, but they'll be different. They won't be this flesh and blood. They will be the spiritual body. And how that's going to be, we're not told. But it will be different. Because it will be a body that is able to go into the spiritual realm with the Lord himself. Because this, all this physical that we see is going to go away. What happens first? The heavens will be rolled back as a great scroll and destroyed with fervent heat. Then the earth and the elements thereof shall be destroyed with fervent heat. That's where we're told in Peter. God's telling us what's going to happen. He is reigning now over his kingdom. And 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 and 9 adds that Jesus will return. His return will include angels in flaming fire. That's in judgment. Anytime you read about flaming fire, fire itself, that is judgment taking place. What happened to Nadab and Abihu? They were judged as in error for worshiping God incorrectly and they were destroyed with flaming fire from God himself. See, the teaching of the rapture is just one part of a view of the end times known as premillennialism, as I've told you. Unfortunately, premillennialism is just as riddled with errors as the rapture is. Premillennialism teaches that Christ's kingdom is not presently on, in existence. We've already read by John that it was because he was a member of it. And we become members of the kingdom of God when we become members of the Lord's church, citizens in the kingdom. That means, of course, uh, according to uh, the premillennialists who believe that uh, the kingdom is not present, this means that Jesus is now king of kings and lord of lords. Okay? He is king of kings and lord of lords. He is reigning and sitting on the throne at the right hand of God, but the premillennialists don't believe that. The Bible teaches very clearly that Jesus did not come to set up an earthly kingdom of any kind. Matter of fact, what did he tell Pilate? My kingdom is not of this earth. How much more evidence do you need? The Lord himself said, my kingdom is not of this earth. And he didn't set up any earthly kingdom of any kind. Here's some scriptures if you want to go look at them. John chapter 18, verse 36. He is presently reigning as king. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 25. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1. And Acts 2, verse 33. And his kingdom is firmly established. It will never be destroyed. Matter of fact, what did he say? About his church, which is the kingdom, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It will never go away. It is a spiritual kingdom. John chapter 18, verse 36. Don't be deceived by these false doctrines that are going around. Talking about the rapture. Jesus is not going to snatch up Christians suddenly and mysteriously. Instead, at a time when no one knows, 
the world will suddenly end and all will be ushered into judgment. 2 Peter 3 and verse 10. Following these false teachings, my friends, will not help you then. I urge you, I ask you for your own good. Search the scriptures. Prove what you hear. Don't follow false doctrine, my friend. You're, you only have one life and one opportunity to do it right. The Bible says clearly it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. You only get one chance. I've given you lots to read here. and I've read a lot of it for you. I implore you, study the scriptures. Go to church. Go where they're teaching the truth. And everything you hear, prove it by God's word. Thank you for this studying with me today, and I hope that I've helped you in some way. Until next time, have a good day. I want to see, to see.